Hi there folks! The question that many people are asking today, and rightfully so, is where to store my money safely while still getting interest during this unexpected recession, which could potentially turn into a whole new financial crisis. Today, we'll talk about the best ways to store and grow your money beyond the stock market, covering the best high interest savings accounts, GICs for Canadians, and more all in one video. These strategies will be great for beginners, but also helpful for experienced investors. In today's market, where even the safe and stable companies are falling by up to 20%, while the best tech companies who were beating the revenue expectations keep on dropping by up to 40%, many people can't help but wonder if it's reasonable to keep most of their money in stocks. And I'm not even talking about the overinflated pandemic darlings like Zoom, Roku, Coin and others that never had any sort of arguments to support their crazy valuations in the first place. Even legit market leaders are plunging despite delivering great results. Investors all over the globe faced a combination of bad factors no one expected. Russia's invasion in Ukraine, supply chain issues in China, rising interest rates and more, the factors which could hurt the market even further later in the year. Because of all this craziness around, I think now is crucial to double down on your savings, especially now when Canadians actually have great tools besides the stock market where they can safely keep and grow their money, like high interest JCs and savings accounts which we are going to discuss in this video in detail, while also discussing some other helpful tools. Alternatively, you could take a solid advantage by investing in the companies that are most likely to recover while they're hit. And I will share my thoughts on that closer to the end of this video, because I do have my own list of companies in mind that I believe will recover fast, even though I am prepared to see even further decline in stock market short term. Now, before we continue, I kindly ask you to take just one second of your time to leave like under this video and subscribe to that channel. Only takes you one second, but I would tremendously appreciate it. It's a great help. And while you're doing so, I will patiently wait for you. Okay, done. Let's start with the high interest savings accounts. I remember receiving a letter from BMO last year with their super special promotional offer of a whole 0.05%. Not gonna lie, it made me laugh like crazy for a bit and immediately after that I dismissed the idea of ever going to use HISA for interest in Canada, while the stock market brings me 30 to 40% of annual return, which was the case in the last two years. So this whole saving account for 0.05% was just laughable and it didn't make any sense for me at that point. However, now when the stock market is down hard and doesn't bring nearly enough returns to even beat the inflation, which is accurate as of May but could change at any time, I decided to put a significant chunk of my funds in a high interest savings account and did my thorough research before I do so to select the best account with best rates. Let's start with EQ Bank. Everyone knows they provide a decent savings rate and it's also a no-fee bank with no physical branches, which is nice. Their Savings Plus account provides a 1.5% interest rate, which is significantly higher than any of Canada's top 5 banks. So, on a $10,000 investment, you would get $150 back by the end of the year. Not much, but they also have a $150 welcome offer for new clients, plus if you're going to use my link, you would also get an additional $20 on top of that. The link and my promo code you can find in the description for this video. Personally, I like the simplicity and design of their app and the website, though keep in mind it's definitely not as top tier as other banks, as they only insure your money up to $100,000. If you have more than that, I absolutely suggest going with another institution. Okay. Now we get to the most exciting part of this video for Canadians who want to get a decent interest accumulated on their money in the safest way possible, without getting into a stock market or involving any risks whatsoever. This solution or a product is called GIC, or a Guaranteed Investment Certificate provided by a financial institution of your choice. So basically, they're borrowing your money while promising that you will get it back with interest. That simple, yes. Now, before 2022, it didn't make any sense because the stock market had been performing wonderfully and the GIC's rates were super low, as were the interest rates. Now, however, when the interest rates are rising, the HISA accounts and GIC's are becoming much more interesting for the Canadian investors. 
So we finally have a few options to grow our money besides just the stock market. You can get a fixed one-year GICs issued by a financial institution of your choice. And for the sake of my example, let's take an EQ bank, where you would get a promise rate of 3.35%. So basically, you invest and forget about your money for a year, and then collect your interest and your original payment. Also, all your money is insured by CDIC, so there is no chance you will lose a cent on it, which is great. However, there is one limitation. You cannot use or withdraw your money for the period of your GIC, which is kind of logical. As of now, it is the safest option for investors who want to invest their money and forget about it for a while. As we've seen in the last two months, even the stable companies out there like Money Life, CIBC, TD and other banks, as well as many stable ETFs that were considered pretty much the safest place to keep your money when it comes to stocks, were falling by up to 20%. Just look at the Money Life and how it fell by 20% in just a day. In this crazy market, honestly, anything could happen. And things like that could happen again and again while the stock market remains unstable. And that's why I find JCs and the idea to keep a huge chunk of your money in high interest savings accounts quite attractive. Basically diversifying not only within the stock market, but also within all financial products and tools available. Of course, there's also real estate, but about that I already talked in my previous videos and will be talking in next ones. Besides, you can get two years fixed GIC for 4% annual interest or choose to commit only for a six month GIC. However, in that case, you'll only get 2% interest, but still it's better than any savings account in Canada right now. Let's take a look at one year GIC as an example to see how much you would earn on that. If you invest $10,000, you would earn $335 by the end of your first year, which is still not bad. If you commit to two years GIC, you would earn $800 and so on and so forth. I hope the logic here is pretty clear. Also, keep in mind that while interest rates are rising, the GICs and savings accounts would increase their rates as well. I'm looking forward to seeing 4% GICs for one year of commitment and 2% high interest savings account soon in Canada. That would be steel for sure. Now let's roll it back a little and talk about stocks again, briefly. Personally, I find Manulife, CIBC, Disney and Airbnb to be great for their money as of now, as well as AMD and NVIDIA of course, about which I've already spoken before many times in my previous videos. I have a feeling that by the end of this year, they will be back at their previous highs. Though again, it's best not to predict anything in this crazy market and just wait for this recession to be over. If you do have any holdings that you believe in, don't stress yourself and keep them safely in your account. You see, there is no need to panic sell, as the market always bounces back to its previous levels, historically. Of course, it is not a financial advice and only my personal view of the situation. So do your own research beforehand at all times. Now, there is also Tangerine, which is a subdivision of Scotiabank, and even though they have a great welcome offer with 2.75% of interest, it's only that high in the first 5 months, and then it drops down to 0.10% interest, which will accumulate less interest than EQ Bank in the long run. Plus, they don't have any decent promotional offers right now. I suggest checking them out once in a while to see if they have a decent welcome offer, and then maybe I would consider trying them out. But right now, EQ Bank, in my opinion, seems a little bit better. Now, there is also Simply, which is owned by CIBC. And right now, they have an amazing welcome offer of $350 by the end of May. Plus, you can also get 10% cash back in your first three months with their credit card. However, their savings rate is pretty terrible, only 0.10%. So I would not recommend using Simply for that purpose. I'm debating about changing the name for this channel and I need your opinion. Right now it's Renbe, which is my name in short version of it, Gen Z Finance. Gen Z, um, well, it's representing my generation, right? Gen Z Finance, but it's actually for everybody. Uh, no ageism here. But Renbe Gen Z Finance is kind of long, I guess. And I was thinking to change my name to Caffeinated Finance. What do you think? Uh, let me know in the comment section if you think it's a good idea. Again, Caffeinated Finance or Renbe Gen Z Finance. Let me know in the comment section because I am debating, I don't know, should I change my whole idea, my name, my thumbnail, well, 
not the thumbnail, but banner for this channel and stuff like that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did find it helpful and now we'll consider diversifying your holdings across many great financial products out there if you haven't already done so. Stay in touch and I will see you next week.